Bonjour à tous and welcome to French for a day. This is my little French corner on YouTube where I'm sharing with you my French beauty secrets. I post a new video every Saturday. Today we're creating the Parisian apéro look. If you ever spend some time in France, you probably heard the word apéro and you were probably invited to one. Apéro is short for aperitif and this is like a huge tradition in France. It also, we have the same tradition in Italy as well, but it's called aperitivo. So this is approximately one hour before dinner. This is the time after work when you're going to go ahead, meet with friends and have a drink um, or a few drinks without getting drunk, of course, but just getting ready for the evening, just getting ready for dinner and you're also going to have some snacks. Now in different cafes and in different bars you're going to find different types of snacks. Sometimes you're going to have like a happy hour with promotional drinks um, along with food. So this is a huge thing. I am going to be getting ready for a French apéro today. Now usually you're going to get ready and just reapply some of the makeup that you already have but today I was not wearing any makeup so we are starting from scratch to get ready for the apéro. Now I'm going to start getting ready, I'm going to take my hair back and in the meantime I want to ask you, do you have a similar tradition in your country? I would love to know, I would love to know where you're from and do you have a similar tradition because I know that for Italians this is going to be no surprise because we have this tradition as well, it's like a sacred tradition, but I'm curious to know if you have similar traditions um, in other countries. Like okay guys, I just took my hair back and you're always seeing me look in this direction because this is where my mirror is, so I'm looking at myself. Now I'm going to start getting ready, I'm going to list all of the products that I'm using in the description box. So I always like to start with a fresh face and I like to spray generously a Veen Thermal Spring Water. This is great for people who have sensitive skin. I always use this one a lot during all seasons and it helps really to calm irritation. So I'm just going to spray my face and I'm going to wait for like 30 seconds and I'm going to gently pat my skin dry and I need to go to the fridge to take the mask that I'm going to be using. Okay, so I have my mask, my little scissors in case I need to resize the mask so that it can fit my face. I usually don't need to resize those masks. I'm using one of the Lancome Genifique masks. I often mention those. So I want to use a face mask. It does have a lot of serum, which is a little bit unpleasant and I'm already with the outfit that I'm going to use to go out. I hope that I'm not going to mess things because I'm going to have to change. Now it comes like this and I need to open it. You don't have to use the same products that I'm using. This is just the mask that I currently have. And I want to apply a face mask just because I want to treat myself a little bit and I want a fresh face. It's always a little bit tricky while I'm applying this. Okay, here we go, don't laugh now. This is actually fits my face quite nicely. It is a little bit big, but it's okay. I like to keep my face masks in the fridge um, approximately like 10 minutes before applying the face mask because it really helps to give me this cooling effect. Wow, I look scary, but anyways. Okay, and now here you have plenty of serum. Don't waste the serum, always apply it on your neck and chest. I'm not going to do that right now because I'm with, um, um, I'm ready to go out actually. I'm with my outfit, so I hope that Nothing goes on my outfit. And I'm just going to go ahead and wait for like 10 minutes or so. You can use a more affordable mask if you don't want to waste an expensive mask. I am going to rub some of the serum in my hands and arms because I want them to look moisturized and glowy as well.
I'm going to go ahead and remove that and look at this glow on my face just going to rub the rest in my face I'm going to go ahead and follow with some eye serum. This one again is by Lancome and I like it. It's going to list it in the description, but I like to use it in conjunction with this mask from Genifique. I find that they layer beautifully together. The whole idea here is to moisturize my face so that it's going to be plump and more youthful. That way we can trick people that I look younger. Then I'm going to go ahead and follow with a lotion. You don't have to use the same products that I'm using. I'm going to be using a Sisley lotion. This is the Sislia essential lotion. I have the night one and the day one. So this is basically like a serum. It's quite liquidy. I'm just going to rub it in my hands. Now a little disclaimer here. You see me using a lot of different skincare products in different videos, but keep in mind that I own some of these products because I want to test them for my YouTube channel. You don't need to own all of them and you don't need to have that many skincare products. Just make sure that you have a nice consistent skincare routine and you don't need to buy every single product that I am showing in my videos. I just do it so that I can review more products for you. I have to say that I like this lotion from Sisley. It is a good one. Now moving on to my favorite eye cream. I'm applying just a little bit because I know that if I don't moisturize my under eye area very well, Right now I'm experiencing dry skin and some fine lines under my eyes and if I don't moisturize my skin very well, I know that it's not going to look good. Now make sure to always listen to your skin. Right now, even though I look probably look glowy and I look glowy in real life as well, I feel like my skin needs something additional. So I'm going to use one of those two. I'm not really sure. I really like this one. This is the SkinCeuticals Metacell B3 Renewal. It's basically like a serum. So I like this one a lot. Or I'm going to be using the Shiseido Wrinkle Smoothing Cream. I also like this one. I know this one works well with the Genifique mask. I think I'm gonna go for this one, even though I prefer the SkinCeuticals one. Just because I know that this one is going to work well. So I'm going to apply this only on the parts of my face that are dry. Now, one last thing that I have before actually moving on to my makeup routine, I'm going to apply just a little bit of the Lomere mask. It's almost like a face cream, this one, because last night I had a very itchy irritation right here. It's not visible now, but I'm afraid that when I start applying my makeup, it might get irritated. So that's why this is like almost like an SOS product. I love this mask by La Mer, but I also like it for target calming product. It's almost like my one of my SOS skincare products. Let's apply this one here. It just makes sure that if there is any kind of irritation, it's going to calm everything and not allow my skin to become unpleasantly red and itchy. Next, we're moving on to my complexion and I'm going to be using Chanel's Water Fresh Tint on a small concealer brush. I'm going to use a little bit because I want to use this one as concealer. Just going to break the bubbles on the back of my hand. And this is the most natural way for me to apply concealer when I want my makeup to be completely invisible. I just like to layer this product under my eyes. So I'm starting by applying this one. I need a little bit more. And this is a water-based product and that's why 
it's going to add additional moisture to the under eye area of my eyes and we always need moisture right here especially if you are like me in your mid 30s or after like I'm 36 years old but I noticed that after 35 I need all the moisture that I can get under my eyes so I'm almost going to use this one as a base. And then I'm going to use the Numero 1 de Chanel foundation. I'm going to squeeze half a pump on the back of my hand. I'm going to make a few dots on my face. I don't want to apply a lot of foundation. For me, it's all going to be about skincare and allowing my skin to show through. That's why I did the face mask and that's why I made sure that all of my skin all over my face is very well moisturized. Really love this brush from Shantkai. I think that this is one of the, my favorite Shantkai makeup products. Well, it's a tool actually. But I find that this is probably the one product from Shantkai that was like 100% worth the splurge for me. And this is like, I have plenty of foundation left, but I'm not going to be applying any more because I don't want to worry that my foundation is going to crease. I just want it to be long lasting. And that's it. And I don't really feel bothered even if a few spots show through or some pigmentation shows through. I just don't bother about that. But the only additional thing that I'm going to do is take a little bit of the foundation from what's left on the back of my hand and I'm going to tap right here under my eyes. I'm going to use my finger to pat this just like additional coverage and then I'm going to use a damp beauty blender to make sure that it's blended seamlessly. Et voila, and we have a lot of sunshine suddenly in the room and probably everything looks paler now. Anyway, so I'm going to apply a little bit of lip mask. If you need a little bit more concealing than I do, then definitely go ahead and conceal or use different products. And then I'm just using my beauty blender to make sure that all of the foundation is well blended and people cannot see some brush strokes or even if someone is sitting close to me, I want to make my skin look um, quite realistic and that's why I'm going to get a damp beauty blender and just tap on some places on my face. And I think that's going to be enough for me. Now, if you have more issues under the eyes or somewhere on the skin, then definitely use more concealer and customize the look so that it can suit your own skin needs. However, don't be afraid to show a little bit of skin. We are humans, so just uh, celebrate who you are. I think that one of the most important things about French makeup is that you should show some skin. Even if you have a little bit of pigmentation, we are all humans, we all have pores, we all have pigmentation. From time to time, we all have some spots on the skin. Uh, we are not perfect, our skin is not like it comes out from Photoshop, it's real life. So always make sure to show a little bit of skin because it's going to make the look more realistic and it's going to give you a lot more freedom and there is nothing wrong in being human. We are all humans. I'm going to fill in my brows lightly. That's my favorite brow pencil, the one that, the only one actually that I use. And of course, I'm going to set everything with a brow gel. I never paid that much attention to my brows, just fill them in lightly and use some brow gel and that's it because I don't want my brows to be too perfect. It's all about the imperfection and being confident in your own body. Eyes are going to be quite simple. I'm just going to go ahead and curl my eyelashes. Blush is going to be the last product that I'm going to apply. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of highlighter on my lids. And this one is from Clay de Pot. It's a very subtle one. Just want to attract the light just a little bit. And then I'm going to be using a new to me palette from M Cosmetics. This one 
is Divine Skies and it was gifted to me by M Cosmetics. A huge thank you. I think that it's very suitable for the French makeup look and that's why I want to use this color here, the deepest shade, with a fluffy crease brush and I'm going to take the excess on the back of my hand. I just want to apply lightly in my crease. I don't really care about being precise because usually if I'm not filming the video, I'm gonna do this whole look, like the makeup part of the look. I'm going to pay attention on the skincare part of the look, but the whole makeup look is going to take me like five minutes or so if I'm doing it without the camera because I'm not going to talk and it always happens much faster. And then maybe just to facilitate the blending, I'm going to be using this color here as well. Same brush, I don't bother to change the brushes because I want the colors to be well blended. And I'm not creating a complicated look anyways. We have an eyelash here. Okay, then since it's an evening look, I'm going to take black coal eyeliner and I'm going to trace my upper lash line but only on the outer part of my eye. And I'm going to stop in the middle of my eyelid because I don't want this to be a proper eyeliner. Enhancing my eyes, let's say. Okay, see? Now I think that black works nice for me because I have very dark hair, but if you're blonde, definitely choose something that's much softer, like a brown color. I think it's gonna look much better on a blonde. I can afford to have black on my eyes because my hair is very dark. So it looks good. And I'm going to apply some mascara and since it's the evening, I'm going to apply two coats of mascara. Okay guys, now we're getting closer. I'm just going to clean a little bit the lip balm because I don't want my lips to be oily. And I'm going to use one of my favorite Hermes lipsticks. Now the lipstick for the apéro has to be long lasting, preferably. A lipstick that I would choose is, I usually choose matte lipsticks just because they are more long lasting. And I'm going to be drinking and eating and laughing and having fun with friends. So that's why I don't want a high maintenance lipstick. I want to make sure that the lipstick is actually going to last on my lips. Sometimes I'm going to apply a little bit of lip liner on my lips and then apply the lipstick so that it's more long lasting. But right now this color is, I really like this color from Hermes. I'm going to show you because it's not a traditional red color. It is not really a fuchsia color. You're going to see it on my lips now. And I can create like a cloud of color here. So I'm going to start by tapping the color on my lips. And then once I apply the lipstick, I'm going to go over it with finger because I want to blur the lines and I want to blur the color as well. I don't want this to be perfect because I'm going to be eating, drinking, and the last thing that I want is perfection. Then taking a lip brush, I'm going to shape my lips the way I want to. I'm going lightly over my natural contours and reshaping my lips the way I want them to be. The key here is to not do too much, so make it look realistic. And this brush that I'm using is from one of the Chanel lip liners. Okay, there we have it. And one thing that's important here is to use a brush that is going to have a short tip, um, sharp tip like this one, because it's going to allow you to literally Photoshop your lips the way you want to. If the brush that you're using is too soft, you're not going to be able to create properly the shape of your lips. And now I'm just going to blot 
and reapply the lipstick and once again I'm going to repeat everything I'm going to just tap with my finger to create this not very perfect shape okay guys now lips are done and I'm usually going to blot three times just to make sure that the color is going to be more long-lasting on me, I'm going to go ahead and apply some blush. I'm using the Tom Ford Brazen Rose, which is my favorite one, because it looks quite natural on me. I like to apply blush last, because that's how I know how much blush exactly I need. Because once I have the lipstick on, oof, we have something like a cotton here. Once I have the lipstick on, I really know how much blush I need. And I know exactly how much I need to apply. Right now, I'm not going to be applying a highlighter because my skin is going to be naturally glowing because the foundation that I used is quite glowing. And once I start laughing, of course, naturally, I'm going to have some color and I'm going to have also some shine on my face. So I don't feel the need to add something additional. Okay, now you can probably see that I don't have a lot of blush here. It looks like I don't have a lot of blush. However, we're talking about apero. So I'm going to be meeting friends. We're going to be laughing and I'm going to quickly get all of the all of this color as I start laughing and having a good time. So sometimes you just have to let your skin breathe and sometimes you just have to let your skin show its colors you don't need to recreate this with makeup if you're in good company i think that the color is going to come and one very important thing is that i'm naturally have fair skin tone and i did not apply a lot of foundation i have very very minimal layer of foundation so that's why all of my colors are going to show through i think that this is one of the french the ultimate french beauty secrets is not having a lot of makeup because your skin is going to show its real colors if you don't wear a lot of makeup or wear makeup to the point where um it's not going to interfere with your natural colors and once you go out your skin is going to be able to show its real colors. I think that this is one of the ultimate French secrets and people often wonder, well, why French women look so incredibly beautiful and they look as if they're not wearing makeup. It's because they don't really wear a lot of makeup on the face and this allows the skin to show its colors and it becomes very natural. And before going out, I have one last touch and this is reapplying my fragrance of the day. French usually don't layer fragrances. They are just going to reapply their fragrance. So, so they are usually not going to use one fragrance in the morning and then layer a different one for the evening. They're just going to use the same fragrance, just reapply it. Right now I'm going to be using my one of my favorites, Oldie but Goodie. This is Coco Mademoiselle, the Pure Parfum. And I like to apply it strategically. I also have the spray and actually I allow, I allow myself to use a little bit of the spray on my hair as well, but I'm going to be using the Pure Parfum now because this is the fragrance that I have worn today. And I really like this old, a little bit vintage way of applying fragrance. Now the only product that I'm going to get in my handbag is going to be the lipstick because I can, and I'm definitely going to need to reapply during the evening and I also can use it as a blush because this is a velvety lipstick and it looks beautiful applied as a blush. It's just very easy to dab a little bit on my cheeks and bring back the color if I need to. So it's almost like a two-in-one product. That's why I like to use it. I like this kind of a matte velvety lipsticks because they can easily be applied as a blush as well. So thank you so much for spending time with me. It means so much to me. I always appreciate your time when you choose to watch my videos and I can't wait to read your comments. Let me know if you have a similar tradition in your country. I always enjoy very much reading your comments and learning something more about you. We are such a wonderful, friendly community here. Once again, thank you so much for your time and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.